so good to see you. So good to see you. So good to see you. Oh, my, 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 my. Let's give Jesus the best hand clap of praise. Come on. Oh, yes. So glad you're here. So glad you're here. This weekend is going to change your life. I believe that. Oh, my sweet front porch friends, I wish I could hug every single one of you right now, just one at a time, with big hugs. You got here. I prayed that you would get here with no problem. Just, just this whole weekend, just be, the whole course has been set. And I'm so thankful. God is going to do something amazing. He's going to refresh you. He's going to strengthen you. He's going to do some stuff at home while you're in this building. I believe that. I know that. And we've got a lot of Front Porch friends that's watching right now online. Why don't we just wave at all of our Front Porch friends that are watching online that couldn't be here this weekend. We love you too. Are you ready to get started? Now just for your info, if it's a little loud, we've got some earplugs for you at the, at the registration booth. So you can go back there and grab some. I just want you to enjoy the worship. You can get out of your seat. You can come up here and stand if you like to dance. You can get out in the aisles. You're at the ramp. You can do anything you want to do. So let's get ready to worship God. Are you ready? Let's go. Oh, 
joy and happy as it. Goodbye lies and questioning. Jesus did it. It is finished. Say goodbye. Goodbye fear and anxiety. Hello joy and perfect peace. Goodbye lies and questioning. Jesus did it. It is finished. Say Just lift your hands all over this room right now. I believe some of you came in here with anxiety and fear, and it was a fear of the future, and it was a fear of what was gonna happen to your kids. And I heard the Lord say that the fear of the future is being broken at the altar. Come on. Fear of the future is being broken at the altar. And the altar this weekend is not just the front of the room. The altar this weekend is the middle of the room. The altar this weekend is the back of the room. There is something that happens when we begin to lift up a shout. And on the count of three, we're gonna lift up a shout. And I'm gonna believe every spirit of fear and anxiety that is trying to come against you is going to be broken. One, two, three, lift up your voice. Oh, no. 
tells us that God ascends amongst the what? The shouts of His people. God ascends amongst the praises of His people. Just bring it down real quick. Can I just say this, and I wanna say this in a kind and loving way, and I wanna prophesy this over America. The church is getting its shout back. I see this thing happening in the room right now spiritually and the enemy has tried to come against the voice that's on the inside of you. Why? Because heaven responds to the sound of a praising generation. So we're not just going through the motions tonight because to be honest, we probably don't look that cool. We're here because maybe on the other side of your shout, God is breaking chains over your family. So I'm just saying, I just feel like there's a strength in the room to resist the devil and see every demon flee, to resist the devil and see those chains broken off the generation. So I'm just gonna say it one more time. Lift up your voices on the count of three. One, two, three. Lift it up. Lift it up. Lift it up. Lift it up. Come on. 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 Something is shifting. Something is breaking tonight. Something is shifting. Something is breaking tonight. Something is shifting. Hey. Praise that will break off heavy chains. I've got a song that makes hell begin to shake. I've got a shout that brings dignity from their grave. Come on, can you lift up your hands? Lift up your hands. I've got a praise that will break off heavy chains. I've got a song that makes hell begin to shake. I've got a shout that brings dignity from their grave. I gotta let it out. Oh, come on, sing it again. I've got a praise that will break off heavy chains. I've got a song that makes hell begin to shake. I've got a shout that brings dignity from their grave. I gotta let it out. I gotta let it out. I gotta let it out. Come on, one more time. Let it out, let it out, let it out. Let it out, let it out, let it out. Hey, shout out to God with the voice of triumph. Shout unto God with the voice of praise. Shout unto God. Cause this is how I fight my battles. And this is how I fight. Oh, come on, lift your hands and sing. This is how I fight, every hand lifted. And this is how I, that's it, that's it. And this is how, yeah. And this is how. This is how I fight my battles And this is how I, It may look like It may look like I'm surrounded But I'm surrounded by you oh. It may look like I'm surrounded But I'm surrounded by you It may look like I'm surrounded But I'm surrounded by you Look at like I'm surrounded Cause this is And this is how I fight my battles This is how I fight my battles This is, this is how I fight my battles This is how I Like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded. Come on, 
sing it out. It may look like it may look like it may look like it may it may look like and we say that the battle belongs to the Lord. The battle belongs to the Lord. I know the battle belongs to the Lord and He is faithful. He is faithful. We say the battle belongs to the Lord. The battle belongs to the Lord. Every voice, the battle belongs to the Lord and He is faithful. He is faithful. We say the battle belongs to the Lord. Every voice, the battle belongs to the Lord and He is faithful because this is how and this is how I fight my battle this is how I fight my battle this is how I fight my battle this is how I shirt very very back I actually said I liked how you fixed your hair yeah you earlier um, I saw a picture of you in worship and I saw you like in the secret place in your bedroom and you were you were walking kind of like militantly back and forth and you were crying out to God and you were speaking and praying and I heard the Lord say that he's increasing your anointing in the secret place because you've been faithful I heard the Lord say when other people weren't lifting up their voice in the quiet place, he heard your whisper. And I hear him saying that even now your whisper is becoming a shout. Your whisper is becoming a shout to the enemy. Your whisper is becoming a shout in the camp of the enemy. And this is what I'm hearing the Lord say, as you begin to lift up your voice, angel armies are going to be released on assignment to fight the battles that you're contending with. Can we just begin to lift up our voices again all over this room? Just lift up a shout of praise. This is how I win my battles. This is how I win my battles. This is how I, this is. And this is how I win my battles. This is how I win my battles. This is how I win my battles. This is how I. They say this mountain can't be moved. They say these chains will never break. But they don't know you like we do. And there is power in your name. We've heard that there is no way through. Hey. We've heard the tide will never they haven't seen what you can do and there is power so much so much power in your name we say move the immovable break the unbreakable
Sing a song If I have a testimony If I have anything at all And no one ever cared for me Like Jesus His faithful hand Treasure! 
foundation, my strength, my light. Come on, some of you just need to give it all back to Jesus right now. I hear the Lord say, no matter what you've gone through, this is going to be your testimony. This is going to be your testimony. Let my children tell their children. Let this be their memory. That all my treasure was in heaven. And you were everything to me. Just, just stay right there. Spirit of the Lord, we give you praise. Mama, come up here. Let's just, let's just exemplify that for, the, for the, everyone in this room tonight. Mama, come on up here, if you will, right there. Just help her right there. Lauren, come over here. Just help her up. Yeah, I think you know this lady. <laughs> And then I think you know this one too, right? <laughs> Lauren, you stand on this side of me right there. Perfect, perfect. And Lindsay will be here in Jesus' name in the morning. She had to go home a few minutes ago, not feeling well. But we're believing the Lord. She's going to be fine in Jesus' name for the morning. So, But when we were singing that song, I was just thinking about the, the reality of what, it, what happens when we serve God, the Word of God says it is passed down, that the blessing of the Lord is passed down from generation to generation to a thousand generations. And, you know, Mom, I think about Grandma Lolly, your grandmother, that was this woman of faith that passed her faith down to Grandma Palmer, your mother, to you, to me, to Lauren. Where's, uh, where's William? William's up here. My grandson. Caroline, y'all come over here. Some of my grandchildren. Annalise, come over here. My grand, some of my grandchildren. Come and stand right here. It's grandchildren. That's right. Where's the rest? Are there any other ones up here? There's, there's more of them. I'm not sure where they are in the building. But I just want this to be a picture of the truth of the Word of God. That this is going to be your story. Come on. Some of you are becoming the Grandma Lolly for your family. Some of you are the ones breaking the generational curse and starting the family blessing that's going to go for a thousand generations. Come on, that's who you are. And even this weekend, some of those things are going to shift in your life. And there's going to be some curses turned to a blessing in Jesus' name. This works for grandfathers. There's some men here tonight. And I'm so glad that you are here for fathers and grandfathers too. But Catherine, I want you to sing this and again. Sing that again. And uh, sing that verse, that second verse about the, yeah. And, but you, uh, I haven't heard this. This is the first time I think I've heard this song is right now. But uh, I just love the truth of this because I want you to put faith on this song for what God is going to do. And I mean starting this weekend afresh. This is going to be a fresh start after this weekend. And for those of you watching online, for you too, in Jesus' name. Sing it again, sweetheart. Y'all just stay up here. Oh, let my children tell their children. Let this be their memory. That all my treasures were in heaven And you were everything to me
we give you glory. just keep hearing this his name just lift your hands close your eyes and look at his face tonight that's his beautiful name Yeshua Jesus Jesus Just look at him tonight and receive peace. Yeshua. Name above all names. Name above every name. Healing in that name. For somebody watching right now, healing in the name of Jesus for you. Be healed in the name of Jesus. Be healed in the name of Jesus. Sing it again. we've come to this place to worship you alone no one else no one else has the gaze of our heart Lord we came hungry thirsting for your presence thank you Lord that you are here Holy Spirit we thank you you are not far away you were waiting on us to get here you came with them in the car all the way here. Thank you, Spirit of God, you're in this room tonight. You are here to heal, here to refresh, here to bring hope, freedom, and deliverance. In the mighty name of Jesus, we thank you for the power of that name. Lord, this whole weekend, we're going to give you the glory, the praise that you deserve with everything in us. Will you do that, ladies and gentlemen? Give him a praise. Come on, one more time. Come on, Jesus. Every clap is yours. Every clap, every praise. Come on, this is for you, Jesus. This is for you, Jesus. Come on, don't stop. Every beat of our heart, every breath in us. You, God, you, God, come on, just a little bit more. You, God, you, Jesus, nobody but Jesus, nobody but Jesus. Come on, ladies and gentlemen, nobody else but God, nobody else but God. Oh, we love you, we love you, we love you, we love you, we love you. 
in Jesus' mighty name. Shalomai. I believe he meant it when he said he inhabits the praises of his people. We're going to spend the next, what, 24 plus hours just praising him and praising him and praising him and praising him and encountering him and experiencing him and being changed by him in Jesus' name. Look at someone standing next to you and say, I'm glad you're here. Will you do that? You may be seated. Just find you a seat. You can sit on the floor if you want to. (laughs) If If you don't like your seat, you can come up to the front. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, so glad again that you are here. We have been waiting for you to get here for days. This is, I mean, this is, there's something really, really unique and special. Like I told you before, even on the porch, about homecoming. It's a little bit different. It's, it's just more intimate. And uh, we just have a, a really, really special time together besides the fact of what's going to happen tomorrow afternoon. That's going to be just a blast. But more than anything, these three services in this room, we're looking forward to praying with you. We're looking forward to ministering to you. I believe you're going to hear a word from the Lord this weekend in unique and special ways. Also, don't just wait for the message or don't just wait for the end of the service. You take any word, even if there's a prophetic word that's being released, like Catherine was releasing prophetic words as she was hearing them from the Lord. You don't just have to sit there and and just be, I mean, we're all glad for ever who's receiving the word, but I'm like, Lord, you have no respect of person. If you're going to say that to her, I'm going to take it too. Come on. You can take it too. You can always share the word of God. It's for you too. So even if there's a, if there's, if while somebody's speaking or whatever, whatever happens this weekend, when it moves your heart, when something captures your attention and it moves your heart, you just take it. You say, that's mine. I'm going to take that. I'm going to put faith on that right there. That's mine. In Jesus' name. These young men and women behind me, they love you. They have been praying for you. They've been waiting for you to get here. These are some of the students from the Ramp School of Ministry, the Ramp University. And tonight, they are going to tell you what, I love what A.W. Tozer says it like this. He says, the most important thing that you can do is to think rightly about God. You know, it's one thing to just know what other people say about God, but it's an entirely different thing to let God speak about himself. And that's what the message of this song is. The message of this song declares the word of God, and it's about what God says about God, what God says about himself. So let's just declare who he is, the one whose eyes burn like fire. Come on, that God. Let's go.
is the best. Ain't no match for him, he on top. That's right, yeah, he coming and he can't be stopped. He's unstoppable. That's cause he too strong and he is the boss. Overall, he's overall. And above everything else, my God stands too tall. The greatest is the show. The ladies come on gentlemen come on he is God and he is holy you are God and you are holy there is no one like you not in heaven not on the earth not under the earth there is no one like you you are God and you are holy amen come on give him a big shout oh Jesus it is so good to see you in the house of the Lord this night. Listen, we were praying in the back earlier, and, and uh, Miss Karen got this word about John chapter 11. When Martha, her brother Lazarus, had died, right? She comes to Jesus, and she says, but even now. I know you know that word, but even now. And I don't know what your circumstance looks like, but I don't know if your brother had been dead for four days. I would say that her circumstance was pretty dire, right? Listen, he is able. He is able. I love Isaiah 40. It says that he is able to make every high place low. He is able to make every low place high. He is able to make every crooked place straight and every rough place smooth. That's the same thing that John the Baptist declared. He said that this is what Jesus is coming to do. He's coming to prepare the way in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Come on. I want us tonight to behold the lion of the tribe of Judah. He, his omnipotence, his power, his strength is being released over you in Jesus' name. Amen.
God of Jacob, great I am, King of angels, Son of man, voice of many waters, song of heaven's throne. give God praise. Come on, give God praise. Every bit of it is to Jesus. Every bit of it to Jesus. Come on, don't stop Jesus. Oh, we love you, Jesus. Thank you, Father, for your glorious presence. Oh, thank you, Lord. I pray this young generation around the world, Gen Z, and everything in between, beholds the lion of the tribe of Judah. 
that this young generation right now that the enemy has so targeted will realize that there's a real God and that he knows them and loves them and sees them. Some of your children are part of that. That's what we're believing for with you. You know, you and I have talked about it before on the porch. You and I have never seen anything because many of you are, are, are sort of around my age. Some of you, probably most of you are younger. But, but for us, we've never seen anything like the day that we're living in. And the way the enemy has so specifically targeted these kids in our nation and around the world, I've n never, ever seen a day like it. Complete mockery to the things of God. And, you know, we talked about it a few weeks ago, just how that we sort of got a choice. We can sit back and, and just talk about how bad things are and, and isn't that terrible. And the enemy wants us to feel like there's just nothing that can be done. It's just too big of a problem. But we are going to do something about it. The only answer. I'm not going to sit back and do nothing. The only answer. And I mean the only answer is to bring this young generation into the presence of that real God so they can encounter Him and experience Him. For 25 years this fall, the ramp has been doing that. That's the, it's crazy to think about. The ramp is 25 years old now. I can't even wrap my mind around that, but it's true. And if, on the porch, you've heard me mention at different times here and there, at, you know, the ramp, the ramp. Some, some, of, some of the front porch friends have never really even known who I was talking about, about the ramp. What's the ramp? Well, you're sitting right in the middle of it right now. So welcome to the ramp. You know, the ramp started in 1998. Uh, it was a big surprise from the Lord for me. I never dreamed I would be working with young people, not in my wildest imagination. And I had been singing. I did concerts from, uh, at that time, I'd been doing concerts up over 20 years whenever the Lord had spoken to me to move back to my hometown here of Hamilton. This is my hometown. I was raised here as a child, then went on the road in 1978. I'd left to go to ministry school and went on the road from there and didn't come back until 1998, really. And uh, I, I came on nothing but a word. My husband's job was in Chattanooga. And so this was just a word from God that we were supposed to come back to Hamilton. Could not shake it. I'm cutting out a lot of details for time. But... Some of you have heard me tell this, but just hear it again. I was, um, <laughs> it was in the fall of 98, and I was driving down this road. It was like 1.30 in the morning, and uh, I was by myself. Like I said, I'd been, been in Hamilton about two weeks. Had no idea except that God laid on my heart that we were supposed to come back to Hamilton. And I was over there by, it's, it's called... Um, like that Asian walk restaurant, that shopping center right down there. And I was at that traffic light, and I just remember looking in that parking lot and seeing all these young people sitting on the hoods of their cars in the, that crazy hour of the morning. And all I remember was looking at those kids, and this thought went through my mind. In the timing of a traffic light, I remember looking over there thinking, those kids, they have no idea who the real God is, and they're just wasting their time wasting their lives and then I heard the voice and I heard the Lord say I want you to work with the youth of this community and then I always say this I I explained to God why I was not the person to work with young people I I told him I am almost 40 I'm too old and I'm not cool and they need young cool youth pastors that would not be me and I'm busy Lord in ministry real ministry and but then <laughs> he is so sneaky then he said to me what he knew would hook my heart but what you invest in the lives of other young people you'll reap in your children because what you sow, what? <laughs> is what you reap. At that time, Lindsay was 12 and Lauren was 15. So I thought, well, that's fine. I'll just uh, help my sister. My sister and her husband pastored a small uh, storefront church in that shopping center right across the street. And uh, in the back of that shopping center uh, was a little room and where they had their youth services. And I thought, I'll go over there on like Wednesday nights when, when they have a service and if I'm not on the road, I'll go back there and, I don't know, take cookies or something for the kids. And I went to one service. There was about seven kids there, counting my two girls, and fell in love with that generation that night. I'll never forget that one little service. 
no big sound system, lights, nothing, just seven kids. And I remember thinking, you know, I don't really care about doing, you know, pizza parties and trips to Six Flags, but I know this, I know I can love these kids. And I can show them the way to the presence of God. That was the two things I knew. And so before long, I told those kids in the beginning days, if you pray, he will come. Because I learned that <clears throat> as a child in this city. If you pray, he will come. And they prayed and he came. And kids that were on drugs didn't want drugs anymore. Kids that were drinking didn't want that kind of drink. <clears throat> Come on, kids that were bound and in perversion, and they, didn't, they wanted to live pure lives. And those seven kids went and got their friends, and seven kids turned to 30. And those kids began to pray in a generation from the north, the south, the east, and the west. And now that's been over 20 years. And now over 500,000 kids have come through these doors in 25 years. And I want to give you a little peek. How many of you have never seen a ramp youth conference? How many of you don't know what a youth ramp conference is? Wave at me. You say, Miss Karen, I've never been to a ramp youth conference. Wave at me. All right. You've never seen that? <clears throat> well, believe it or not, for the last 25 years, we host around 10 conferences a year. Can you believe that? For over 20 years, we host around all, it's almost a conference every month. Some conferences, some months are two conferences. And so kids come from all over the United States. And some kids come from other nations from the seeing it online. And yet they are not coming to see an old lady. And they're not coming to see Hamilton, Alabama. They heard God was here. And this generation is hungry for God. And they're looking for something real. And for 20 plus years, I've seen these altars filled with now hundreds of thousands of kids that have been transformed in his presence. In the summertime, we take them all down to my house where you're going tomorrow. In the summertime, we take them in all the summer conferences. We take all thousand kids. We get about a thousand kids in here. We take out the chairs and they all sit on the floor. And from wall to wall now, from the first conference over 20 years ago, this room has been filled every single conference conference. So I'm going to give you a little peek. I don't know which video they've picked, but I just, this is like a three minute clip of just one of the conferences, uh, hopefully one of the summer ones, because we do them all year long, but just pick one of the summer conferences. Let me show you just a little clip of the highlights from just one of our more recent conferences and let you just see what happens in here every year, every month almost. Watch. Awake my soul to burn again. I cannot be silent. No. There's some things God may ask of you to do and to give up in giving up your life that may not be easy enough that you would say, please take this cup from me, but God, not my will. Yours be done. There's an invitation for encounter. struggling with. I still see the things that I'm wrestling with, but I see who I'm called to be. How do I get from here to there? I'll tell you, it is the God that answers by fire. There's a fire that the water of this culture won't touch. There's a fire that the water of temptation won't quench. There's a fire, and it's called the fire in his eyes. You are designed 
to be consumed by God. The Bible says in Hebrews, for our God is a consuming fire. The fire of God doesn't want to touch you. The fire of God doesn't want to just mark you. The fire of God doesn't want to just brand you. The fire of God wants to consume you. old, burning for Jesus, speaking in tongues, on fire, following him. This just ain't a you thing, no. This is a Jesus thing. Let this be the generation that beholds the King and loses ourselves to find ourselves in Him and Him alone. Now my response is my yes. What's and for all? What God does in His presence. That's what God does in His presence. He transforms lives. And they never forget that encounter. And the testimonies that have walked out of this altar are endless. And the fruit remains. And I know because I see their lives. And they say it's been eight years and I haven't looked at pornography. And it's been six years since I've seen the last image. And it's been and healed of cutting and, and suicidal thoughts. You name it. You name it. It's been in these altars. <clears throat> One after another after another. And I believe that your sons and daughters are going to be a part of that too. Because I believe the same promise God gave me is the promise God gives you. You know, I never dreamed when I, when, whenever the Lord laid on my heart to begin this front porch uh, journey I, with you. I, 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 was, I was doing this to encourage praying mothers and fathers because I had prayed a prodigal home and I'd seen God answer, answer prayer for my daughter. And whenever my daughter came home, I thought, well, I know how bad I needed encouragement in those years of intercession. I needed somebody to tell me that it was going to work and that she would come. I needed somebody to tell me, keep going, Karen, keep. Even though I did and I saw God answer prayer, I just, there was those days. And now, so I wanted to be that for you. I decided, what, since, I don't know how many years ago it was now, since I started it. I, I wanted to be that encourager in your life. I wanted to be a friend for you to encourage your faith on your journey of intercession so I can tell you your prodigal is going to come home or whatever it is you're believing God for. But I never thought, never crossed my mind until just a little while ago that the Lord even had a bigger picture, that he was going to give the front porch friends the same honor and even calling and even a responsibility that he gave me when he called me to love kids besides my own. And he called me to love a, a generation that seemed so big and overwhelming to me. But he, I had a, a little part to play in his global plan and dream. And I believe that that's why you and I have connected. I believe I'm to stand with you in friendship for your family and for your needs to be met, whatever they are. But I'm asking you tonight to join me and let's do something together for the dream of God's heart, for the prodigals out there who don't have praying mothers and don't have praying fathers praying for them. I think you and I could make up the gap for that and start praying for some other kids, but even besides our own. You say, Karen, how do I do that? How do I do that? Well, there's many ways to do that. And the Lord will lay some specific things even maybe into your life. And he may run, you know, have you become a part of some young people's lives? I don't know, but I know this by giving to the ramp. And, and you have been giving to the ramp. And I've got a little praise report for that too. But even tonight, let's just give an offering toward this mission of awakening young people. The ramp, as you know, we do the conferences where they are awakened in the presence of God. Then they are brought to the school of ministry and they are equipped in the word of God so that this secular culture will not be able to dismantle their faith and destroy their lives. We have a school that's going to establish them with an unshakable faith called Ramp University. And so tonight I want to ask you to give 
toward this mission of the ramp as we continue our mission for our conferences every year, for our school of ministry to awaken and equip these young people. Y'all know you've been helping me with the dorms. We needed to repair those dorms badly, right? Well, as of tonight, you have given, we, we were asking for 500,000. It was a little more than that, but the need was, but 500,000 was gonna go a massive long way to help us. And as of tonight, you, my front porch friends, and those of you watching online, you have given $495,000. Just 5,000 more, and this need is gonna be met, fully met. Can you give God praise for that? So tonight, let's give to the Lord. Let's give to his heart to awaken this generation. I want to ask you, and even those of you watching online, there's going to be a place where you can give in this offering. And those of you in this room tonight, let's sow a seed into a ministry that's reaching prodigals, into a ministry that's reaching young people all over the world. And I declare over you the same promise God gave me. What you invest in the lives of other young people, you'll reap in your children, because what you sow is what you reap. And I believe the word of God is true. So even he even says, he that sows generously will reap generously. He that sows, sows scarcely, scarcely will reap scarcely. But I believe that tonight you're gonna to sow with all of your heart. You do your best offering to the Lord and say, Lord, I'm gonna call this a seed into my heart and into my life and my children in Jesus' name. Father, we do not take lightly the call that you have given us, the responsibility. We do not take lightly the promises of your word. Father, thank you for these friends that you've brought. Lord, we stand together as a family, your children, your sons and daughters. We are here to serve your heart for those that you love, for your prodigal children. So Father, get through us tonight in every way, in our giving, in our yes, in our laid down lives. Lord, I'm asking you to bless these back that are sowing in this room and online right now in their homes. I pray that you will give them back the promise you gave me in Jesus' name. We thank you for it, and we declare this offering blessed, and every giver blessed in the name of Jesus. And we say amen. Amen. If you're giving online, you can. the information is on the screen. You can uh, scan that QR code, or you can text to give. They'll put that information up, how to text to give. If you need an envelope for cash or credit card giving, just raise your hand, and we'll bring you an envelope if you need an envelope for cash or credit card giving. And that way we can serve you right here all over this room. Thank you from the bottom of my heart. Those of you watching online, we are so appreciate your support. I believe tonight this mountain is going to be completely, completely taken over. Close, phase one is closing tonight in Jesus' name. The last 5,000. Can you believe that the first night of this conference, we're going to close this gap? I believe that. I believe that in the morning I'm going to be able to say, it's over. We got to phase one is finished in Jesus' name. Will you agree with me for that? You give whatever you can, and with all of my heart, we thank you. It's going to go to reach young people. If you're making a check, you can make it payable to the ramp. And like, once again, if you're texting to give, that information is on the screen. All right. If you are ready, they're still filling out their envelopes, so we'll just give them a few more moments to do that. All right. Thank you so much. Thank you, thank you. And those of you that have already given online uh, and for this need, some of you that gave $1,000, some of you gave $5,000. We had one lady that sent in $100,000 toward that $500,000 need. Can you believe that? They did, they did. We had people that just stood with us for these dorms and, uh, and we're gonna see God do something great. I'm just glad we've got friends that's not just gonna sit back and talk about how bad the world is. We're gonna say, no, we've got the answer and we're stepping up. We're gonna bring this answer to the world. We're gonna do something in Jesus' name. Amen, amen. Well, Chosen, you know what? While they're doing that, why don't y'all just tell them you're saved? Amen? Go for it. And as they're doing this, go ahead and pass these buckets and let's just declare saved. Do that in Jesus' name. I know y'all didn't know it, but that's okay. You got it. Yeah. 
on one more time. Give Jesus praise. The whole weekend, every time you see these kids up here worshiping the Lord, I want you to see the ones you're believing for. By faith, say they're going to be mine someday. That's going to be my daughter someday. That's going to be my son. That's going to be my husband worshiping God like that. Anybody want to agree with that? Now, my mother was looking at me just now saying that she didn't, the bucket didn't come by her. Does anyone else need to, be, to get that the bucket you didn't come by you? Anyone else? Mother, I think you're the only one. So, <laughs> Lauren, go down there and, and take care of Mama Nell's offering because I don't want my mother to miss a blessing, that's for sure. Because I want her children to be blessed. <laughs> oh. It's so good it is to have my daughter, Lauren. Lauren oversees uh, the conferences. She, that is her department. All those conferences, she is the one that oversees that department and making sure all that stuff works right. It's a big job. And she does a great job doing that. Samuel Bentley, stand up, sweetheart. That's my awesome son-in-law, man of God, right there, Samuel Bentley. Wave at them, Sam. And uh, like I said, Lindsay and Casey, uh, are home tonight believing the Lord for healing in their body. I just got mad at the devil when she had to leave right before the service started said, Mom. So anyway, I said, Lindsay, healing in Jesus' name so she can be here tomorrow. Amen. Well, it's, it is going to be an incredible day tomorrow, uh, not only for the service in the morning. There's just so many things planned for you. Of course, tomorrow night, we're going to all just be filled with the Holy Spirit and make, the rapture may take place, and that'd be fine too. So... But not until your family's all saved, and then we can have Jesus come. Amen. Yes, there's some things to do. But now tomorrow afternoon, are y'all ready to go to the valley? There's a big, white, furry animal ready to see y'all. He's just been waiting all afternoon. I, I told him he knows something's up. And... Uh, so, so he will be there for sure. And I want you to be able just to come and relax and enjoy yourself in the valley. You can go to the Rock Hole. You can go to Kinasarni. You can go, if you want to climb Prayer Mountain, the brave ones can go climb Prayer Mountain. Did you bring your rocks? Anybody? Yeah. Yes. If you didn't bring rocks, we will have a plenty, okay? There are plenty of rocks in the valley. And if you didn't, if you don't know what I'm talking about, then you didn't watch the front porch Wednesday night. But if you watch the front porch, then you know, thank you, Chosen. You may be seated. Thank you, honey. Um, but yeah, the, the, we, we, we had quite the word Wednesday night. When Mother sent me that at 7.30 Wednesday morning, I knew that was your word and mine too. And so we're going to bring our rocks with the names of, of whatever it is we're believing for. And uh, if you want, if you're not, if you don't want to climb Prayer Mountain, well, you can send it by somebody that is, and we're going to take them up there. We even had people from England and South Africa and different places that were commenting and asking, would, would someone uh, take a rock for them? Because they couldn't mail it in. And we had some that were saying, would you write David's name, their son, on a rock for them and take it to Prayer Mountain. I, we sent back a comment that said, absolutely, we will do that. So if you're looking through the comments and you see somebody that's done that, do that for them too, all right? So we're just going to build our own little garden of faith up there, a rock garden of faith. And these students, when they're up there praying, we've got almost almost 300 ramp uh, students in our school of ministry, and we're going to be sending them up there to pray. And I love to pray up there often. We'll be carrying, holding your rocks and praying over those names on those things. So it's, it's going to be a special spot for us. And those rocks, they're going to be there till Jesus comes. Yeah. Hallelujah. You'll be able to always say, I've got a little piece of something in my heart up there on Prayer Mountain, and that's going to stay right there. So anyway, we're going to have fun tomorrow. John Moore is going to have a barbecue picnic for you. And yeah, it's going to be, it's just good. It's just going to be fun and good. I just can't wait. Anyway, the mill house, you better go in that mill house. I have worked all day cleaning it up. <laughs> oh. Anyway, that's why these bags are under my eyes tonight. It ain't been that clean in a long time, right? No, no, you're worth it all. You ready to talk about some things in the spirit and the word? This was so cool. This morning, Samuel, my son, I think it was Samuel, maybe in Jacob, I can't remember. But one of the boys sent me a text of a post that Sean Boltz uh, posted on his Instagram. Now, Sean Boltz, if you don't know him, he's a great man of God. 
He's a true prophet of the Lord. He's, he, he has given actually this house a prophetic word before that was very significant to us. And accurate is an understatement. And uh, his timing, his word. And so, but I just thought this was Sunday. I mean, I don't talk to Sean Boltz. I don't think I've ever met him. Have I? Maybe once. But, uh, yeah, a long time ago. But anyway, he doesn't know that we're having this conference. And I just thought this was neat. This was his post today uh, that he posted. Your prodigals, the homecoming. Come on, y'all. Thank you, God. Isn't that just all? The homecoming. This is going to be a weekend of miracles for you in this room and those of you at home. In Jesus' name. Come on, say, that's mine. That's mine in Jesus' name. I'm taking that. Say, this weekend, this weekend. my weekend of deliverance weekend of deliverance. in Jesus' name. I want y'all to see a sweet friend you love, Miss Pam Barnett. Stand up. Pam. There she, come here, Pam. Come, 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 come. Come out here. Y'all know Pam Barnett. from. If you've read my book, and if you have it, then you'll be able to get it this weekend. If you, when you read it. You'll read about Miss Pam Barnett and, the, and Miss Smalley, uh, Lee Smalley. My, I want y'all to meet the whole prayer force. Now, I've got my own prayer force, my prayer team, and they pray for y'all. They, they are here to pray for y'all. I want my prayer force team to stand up, my whole prayer force team. These ladies, and there's more of them tomorrow that's coming. These are the ladies that pray with me and for me, and these are the ladies I call when I want prayer, and they are going to be tomorrow... They're going to be on Prayer Mountain waiting on you. They're going to be at the rock the hole. The whole rock hole tomorrow is going to just be dedicated not only for you just to sit and soak if you want to, but, but they're going to be there to pray with you tomorrow. Like the whole thing is just going to be a prayer place for y'all. So it's, it's, I can't hardly wait for it. It's going to be so good. And so anyway, Miss Pam Barnett, she'll be there all day. So I always say it like this. Kevin and Pam, I've known her and her husband my whole life since we were children. So we, all, we grew up yeah. together. So we're like sisters and family. Yes. But I always sat like this. She's been such a dear friend to me, an intercessor. We sat like this. Everybody needs a Pam. Oh, we need to make a T-shirt that says, everybody needs a Pam. <laughs> How many of you have a Pam in your life? A good intercessor friend. She's probably in this room right now, isn't she? That's right. Everybody needs a Pam. I love you, Pam Barnett. You Thank too. you, hon. Thank you. All right. Let's talk about some stuff. Now, Holy Spirit, I acknowledge you more than anything else. My helper, my friend, lover of my soul, the desire of my heart, my teacher, help us tonight. Holy Spirit, you are here among us and with us. Oh, speak to us, Lord. Awaken our hearts Put on our hearts what is on your heart tonight. Give us ears to hear what the Spirit of God is saying. In Jesus' name, we are saying yes, Lord. Amen. Amen. All right. Okay, I'm going to share some things that the Lord's laid on my heart. I prayed over this word for you, as I always do every week or whenever we gather in this room. And the Lord just had one word for tonight, something different for tomorrow night. But for tonight, it was just one word that he just wasn't changing the subject. I even tried. I thought, what about this? But I just went to study it, and there just, it wasn't there. And when I pulled this word back out, uh, it's, this is what he is saying, and I cannot get away from this. I only want to say what he is saying. He has something on his mind for us. I want to hear it, don't you? Yes. And so I, this, some, some of this word he gave me in the spring, and I've shared parts of it on the porch. Here's the deal with y'all. Y'all know pretty much everything I know and hear. If I hear something from God, I'm going to tell y'all like first. So there's not much I, I know that y'all don't already know because I tell y'all everything. I hear from God. If I hear from God, I'm going to the porch and y'all are going to hear it. All right. <laughs> but some of this word he gave me in the spring and then some of this word he just gave me in the last, uh, the month of September actually. And uh, this is, you know, it, Jesus said it often when he was here in the flesh. Let him that has an ear to hear, hear 
what the Spirit is saying. Saying. So we've got this word right here, this logos word that we all talk about all the time, this, this written word. But then there's the rhema, that's when the Spirit of God meets this written word and it becomes rhema, then that is the speaking, the, the living word of God. We live on it. It's our daily bread. And for me right now, this is that word. I, I cannot come into any place right now in this particular season of my life <clears throat> and just sort of preach on something that ignores the condition of our nation. So tonight we're going to touch on that a little bit, but we're also going to go, we're going to kind of go really big picture with actually just the global situation I think we're all finding ourselves in. And then we're going to bring it right on to, into your house and into your particular need with you and your family and what God has for you specifically. But it is kind of hard to come in here and ignore the fact that we really are in some majorly critical days. And, and you just can't act normal because things are not normal anymore. And things are changing fast. And you sense it. You sense it in the air. You feel it all the time. You hear it in almost every conversation. If, you're, if, if I'm on an airplane, I can't even sit on an airplane anymore by somebody, even if I obviously wouldn't know them, without them bringing up the, you know, these weird times. What's going on in the world? People are asking that. Do you find that in your office? Do you find that in the place where you work? Are people talking about it? I mean, that's where that's. If I'm just standing in a line somewhere, people are sort of talking about inflation and everything else that's happening. It's uncertain. Men's hearts failing them out of fear. It's all over every news media, every day in our faces. I mean, I, I got Chinese food yesterday. It would have, it, we got this little Chinese truck down here. If you get hungry sometime tomorrow afternoon after the barbecue, I doubt it, but you might. There's a little place called Inori. And she's got a little Chinese, not Chinese, it's Japanese, Japanese truck. Don't we love Inori? So I went yesterday, I go there all the time, and I went and got my hibachi shrimp and my little sweet, what's her name? Olvi. Olvi? She's the sweetest angel. And Miss Olvi yesterday opens the, the thing that usually she doesn't say a whole lot. I just give her my credit card. She said, oh, Miss Karen. And so yesterday, though, she said to me, she says, Miss Karen, are we in Revelation 8? <laughs> the first thing she said. She says, are we? Do you think we are? I said, absolutely. I think yeah, that's, yes. And we very well may be. I don't know. I just know that we're in strange days. <laughs> and there are wars and rumors of war. And it feels a little too real. And it makes you start wondering, are we really going to see something in my generation? It's one thing my mom can talk about World War II, but I've, I'm beginning to wonder, is my grandsons, my grandchildren, what, what, what America will they know? What world will they know? I'm asking a lot of questions. Wickedness in high places, truly. And while the world, and listen to me, is looking for answers in all the wrong places, you and I know that these problems of our nation will never be solved by the wisest of men in Washington or anywhere else in the world for that matter because this is not a political war. This is not a cultural war. This is a spiritual war between light and darkness and it will only be won as it is fought in the heavenlies through prayer and the prayers of God's people. That's where this will be dealt with. If you were to ask me right now, what word would you describe or what do you feel like is the word that you would say best describes this hour, Karen? What do you, if you had to, if you had to just put the word in two or three words, what would you say would best describe the hour we are in in our nation, for that matter, even in the church? And I have that word. I found it the other day, this month. As I was up early with the Lord, and here's the word that I feel like describes where we are at the moment. It is this word. It's th three words. Who knows? Perhaps. Strange three words, but I really believe it's where we are. 
Who knows? Perhaps. I'll tell you where I found the word. It was in the book of Joel in the second chapter. And it starts off like this. I'm, of course, y'all know me. I'm reading in the New Living Translation. And it says this. Sound the alarm in Jerusalem. Raise the battle cry on my holy mountain. Let everyone tremble in fear because the day of the Lord is upon us. Listen, y'all. The day of the Lord is upon us. Verse 12. That is why the Lord says, turn to me now while there is time. Give me your hearts. Come with fasting, weeping, and mourning. Don't tear your clothing in your grief, but tear your hearts instead. Return to the Lord your God, for he is merciful and compassionate, slow to get angry, and filled with unfailing love. He is eager to relent and not punish. Who knows? Perhaps he will give you a reprieve, sending you a blessing instead of this curse. Amen. Who knows? Perhaps. At the moment this particular passage was written, Israel obviously had sinned. They were in deep rebellion and judgment was heading straight toward them. But right here in the middle of their sin, with judgment headlong in their face, comes this opportunity from God. Quickly. Like a little window of the Lord saying, return to me while there's still time. In other words, there's a limit to this thing. There's a little bit of time right here. Come to me and repent and rend your heart. Because I'm slow to be angry. Yeah, I want to relent. And then he says, who knows? Perhaps. It was as if in the chaos of the hour, watch please, everything was hinging on the response of his people. Everything for a rebellious nation was hinging on the response of the people of God to that call. Can you hear me today, America? Everything hinging on our response to that word. Yes. So, while the world is looking around to see what will happen right now, I believe all of heaven is looking on the earth to see what's going to happen. Why do I say that? Because 2 Chronicles 16, 9 says the eyes of the Lord are roaming to and fro across the whole earth just looking for somebody he can show himself mighty through. Somebody that's listening to the call to an obedient heart. Somebody that hears his heart calling out to come and repent. All of heaven looking to the earth to see how we respond to the voice of God in this little window of time. We talked about this on the porch not too long ago, but I'm going to have to bring it up again for a reason that the Lord just showed me something new on it the other day. Those searching eyes of God. I just love that verse. The eyes of the Lord roam to and fro. Oh. Well, in 1949, the searching eyes of God found somebody. Remember when we talked about these ladies a few weeks back? Remember, we talked about the two ladies from the Hebrides Islands. How many of you have never heard of the Hebrides Revival? It's okay if you haven't. I just need to know. How many of you have never heard of the Hebrides Revival? You don't know what I'm talking about when I say that. Okay. Wait at me a little bit more if you don't mind, just so I'll know how to, to go about this. All right. All right. Well, that's, that's quite a few of you. It's okay, because I didn't know a whole lot about it either until this past spring when I began to look into this word. And I got, in, I got into this word because of the breakout at Asbury, that revival that broke out at Asbury College. <laughs> Glory to God. And then last week at Auburn University, what in the world? 
So I, I was intrigued by this because I don't believe God just wants to come and visit for a week. I believe he wants to come with a visitation that will last till Jesus comes. I'm looking for that kind of a move of God. So in, in 1949, something happened, and, and it, was, it was a great move of God, and it was really began with these two ladies. It's so intriguing. Their names were Christine and Peggy Smith. Now, the interesting thing about these two women, again, these are women that live in the Hebrides Islands. These are islands, islands of Lewis off the coast of Scotland, okay? Sort of in the middle of nowhere for them. It's kind of like Hamilton, in the middle of nowhere. But these two women, Christine and Peggy Smith, were sisters, 82 and 84 years old, okay? Uh, Peggy was completely blind, and Christine suffered with crippling arthritis. All right. Now, I want you to keep that in mind. That's very important. They're 82 and 84 blind and had crippling arthritis. All right. That's important. Now, the thing is that's interesting when I begin to study them, I love this little line that someone said about them. They said, these two women were little known by man, but well known by God. Here's what history said. These two women became greatly burdened because of the appalling state of their church or their parish. Because not a single young person attended their worship services at church. Not a single one. Not one young person. It said they were troubled. Peggy and Christine were troubled by a growing trend of young people toward worldliness. Well, it became clear that an outpouring of God's spirit in revival was the only hope to supernaturally reverse the situation. So what did they do? Peggy and Christine were not content to sit there and say, well, isn't this terrible what's happening to these young people of our nation and our island? Isn't this just awful? None of them care about God. And I'm 82 and 84 and I'm about to go be with the Lord. So, you know, that's just awful, isn't it? No, they decided, no, we're going to do something about this. They're, they were appalled, he says, at the state of their church. So they decided to take a Bible verse. I love this. Isaiah 44, 3. They took one verse. Isaiah 44, 3, I will pour water on him that is thirsty and floods upon the dry ground. And Peggy and Christine took that one Bible verse and they began to pray that one verse. Come on. Now, I'm telling you, when you pray, y'all know this from the porch. When you pray the word of God, you pray the will of God. And when you pray the will of God, you can have whatever you ask. And so they were praying what God was wanting to do anyway. God was desiring to pour out his spirit on the dry ground. So Peggy and Christine started praying that verse. God, you promised that you would pour water on him that is thirsty and floods upon the dry ground. God, you promised it. And that's so beautiful to me because this word... It could have just laid there on their coffee table, just like a dormant promise, laying there on the book with nothing happening, still no revival in their city. But when you, this word right here is so alive that when you take it off the coffee table and you put it in your heart and then you begin to speak it out of your mouth, this word is so full of life. Come on, it is activated and it cannot return void. It will accomplish the will of God wherever it is sent. Doesn't matter who you are, doesn't matter how old you are, doesn't matter how educated you are, nothing matters except the faith in the Word of God. Come on, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter if you're blind, it doesn't matter if you're 84 years old. You can begin to quote the Word of God, believe the Word of God, and shake a nation and change your family. They decided that they were going to pray and they were going to keep praying. And what they decided to do, they decided to pray specifically for this particular need for an awakening in their nation and the youth of their nation. They were going to pray two times a week. This is amazing. Every Tuesday night and Friday night, Peggy and Christine decided that they would pray, again, 82, 84, blind and crippled. They decided that they would pray from 10 p.m. to 3 or 4 a.m. every Tuesday night and every Friday night in their house. Imagine it. That's almost six hours. At their age, when they could sleep, 
They decided they were going to forfeit that and two nights a week pray one thing, that God would pour water on the dry ground of their nation. One night as they were praying, Peggy, the blind one, has a vision. (laughs) And in this vision, she sees the church of her fathers were crowded with young people packed to the doors and a strange minister standing in the pulpit that she didn't know. She was so stirred by the vision that she sent for her pastor. I read the story explicitly. This is what they said. It says she told her pastor the story of the vision. And he took her message as a word from God to his heart. Turning to Peggy, he said, what do you think we should do? What? Peggy said, give yourself to prayer. Give yourself to waiting upon God. Get your elders and deacons together and spend at least two nights a week waiting upon God with us in prayer. They made an agreement, Peggy and the pastor. And Peggy asked them to do this. Peggy told him, the pastor, she said, you get the elders and the deacons together. And she said, Christine and I will pray here and you pray there. So they got the pastor and the deacons went to a barn and they started praying with seven men, seven elders from the church. The men were praying in the barn and Peggy and Christine were praying in the cottage. When I read that this past, this, this month, this just shot off the page for me. I just knew that in this little thing right here, this little strategy that I saw Peggy have from the Lord was a word for us in the condition of our nation and our families. It's huge. Peggy said it. You pray there, we'll pray here. She knew prayer was the only hope. Revival was the only hope for their nation. You pray there, we'll pray here. I believe tonight to everybody that's watching me online, Front Porch Friends in South Africa and in the UK and and in Australia and everywhere that y'all message us that you're watching and you're with us. We've come to tell you, we are here in America. You are where you are. But you pray there, we'll pray here. Come on. You pray there, we'll pray. Pray here, oh, all over the world, intercessors lifting up their voices to this awesome God who will hear and answer, and who knows, perhaps, who knows, perhaps. No, no, no. Those seven men were praying at the same time they were praying. Twice a week, 10 p.m. to 3 to 4 a.m. Same time, about the same thing. Those seven men begin to pray the same verse that Peggy and Christine was praying. It's the power of agreement. When you get people unified in agreement, something happens. They prayed the same verse. You promised you would pour water on him that is thirsty. Floods upon the dry ground. And if you study the history of it, they said it was hard. They said it was like nothing was happening in their prayer meetings. For weeks and months they prayed. They said nothing was happening. No, no, they said they just prayed on anyway. Until one night, after months of these men praying and Peggy and Christine praying, feeling nothing and dry, 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 but praying anyway. They said one night, one of the elders began to pray Psalms 24. Who will ascend the hill of the Lord? Who will stand in his holy place? He that has clean hands and a pure heart. And all of a sudden, he stops. I'm going to quote what they said he said. He said, it seems to me to be so much humbug. To be waiting as we are waiting, praying as we are praying, when we ourselves are not rightly related to God. Then they said that that elder stopped and he went like this to God. He said, God, are my hands clean? Is my heart pure? And before he could finish it, he was slain in the spirit. 
And this is what they said. History says something happened in the barn at that moment in that young deacon. There was a power loosed that shook the heavens and the bowls of intercession tipped over. <laughs> They said when that happened, the power of God swept into the parish and an awareness of God gripped the community such as had not been seen for more than 100 years. Peggy and Christine, as they were praying, she had seen the vision of a, of a young man they didn't know in the pulpit. That night was the night a revival broke out that was going to last at least four years and tens of thousands of people swept into the kingdom of God. That night, it broke out. It was fascinating because the young man that they found to lead that revival that broke out was a young man named Duncan Campbell. I ain't got time to tell you the story of how they got him, but he, he answered the call to come. In fact, show, me, show them the picture. I'm going to show you a picture, an actual picture of Peggy and Christine and Duncan Campbell. There they are. That's Peggy and Christine. That's the young man that came. Just leave that up there for a minute. Here's what Duncan Campbell, I loved this that he said. Duncan Campbell said this. He said, what happened that night <clears throat> was an awareness of God that gripped the community. Then he says this. An awareness of God, that is revival. When an awareness of God grips the community. This is fascinating. I read specifically one thing he said. Listen to this. I'm quoting Duncan Campbell. He said, first let me tell you what I mean by revival. An evangelistic campaign or special meeting is not revival. In a successful evangelistic campaign or crusade, there will be hundreds or even thousands of people making decisions for Jesus Christ, but the community remains untouched. And the churches continue much the same as before the outreach. But in revival, God moves into the district. Suddenly the community becomes God conscious. The Spirit of God grips men and women in such a way that even work is given up as people give themselves to waiting upon God. He said in this awakening, in, the, in this uh, movement on the, this awake, wait, what was it? Hebrides Revival. <laughs> the parish minister at Barbus wrote this. The Spirit of the Lord was resting wonderfully on the different townships of the region. God's presence was, watch this, God's presence was in the homes of the people, on the meadow, in the moorland. And even on the public roads, this presence of God is the supreme watch. The presence of God is the supreme characteristic of a God sent revival. Listen to this. Of the hundreds who found Jesus Christ during this time, fully 75% were saved before they even came to the meeting or before they even heard a sermon by other ministers in the church. The power of God, the spirit of God was moving in operation. The fear of God gripped the souls of men. This is a God sent revival as distinct from other special efforts in the field of evangelism. I found this today. I had not seen it. But it, this, when I couldn't get this word off of my mind and I knew this was what God wanted me to share, I started listening to something and I just happened up on this. This is the voice of Duncan Campbell telling, this is about three minutes telling an eyewitness account he was the minister that led it of that revival i want you to listen watch the screen and listen to duncan campbell himself tell us about that revival listen the moment that that happened in the bar a power was let loose in barbas that shook the whole of louis god Stepped out. The Holy Spirit began to move among the people. And uh, the minister writing about what happened on the following morning to this. You met God on Meadow and Moorland. 
you met them in the homes of the people. God seemed to be everywhere. What was that? Revival! Revival! Not an evangelist, not a special effort, not anything at all organized on the basis of human endeavor, but an awareness of God that grips the whole community so much so that what saw. I can remember once within 24 hours addressing a meeting, crowded churches. There was a dancing program that night, and while this young man was praying in the aisle, the power of God moved into that dance. And the young people, over a hundred of them, fled from the dam and those seen from a tree. And they made for the church. Oh, I endeavored to get up into the pulpit. I found the way blocked with young people who had been at the dam. When I went into the pulpit, I found a young woman, a graduate of Aberdeen University, who was at the dance. And she's lying on the floor of the pulpit crying, Is there mercy for me? Is there mercy for me? Is there mercy for me? God was at work. Just give God praise right there. Come on, just come on. Can you imagine a move of the Spirit of God that would be so significant in 2023 that, I mean, people didn't even have to come. I mean, I'm, I'm, they said that in that revival that people would be awakened in their sleep at 2 or 3 in the morning, just awakened out of their sleep, gripped with conviction. They said that at, at night, some of the nights, that even at 1.30 in the morning, people would be walking down the streets just being drawn by the Spirit of God to the church. They didn't have social media, radio, television telling them. They just knew the Spirit of God was drawing them to get to the church, to get somebody to pray. That is a... Why am I even telling you this tonight? Because I believe it's the only hope for our nation. I believe Peggy and Christine found a strategy that they experienced a move of God. And I believe just like they believed that it has become ex exceedingly clear that an outpouring of God's spirit in revival is the only hope to supernaturally reverse the situation in America and the nations of the earth. And I believe like Peggy and Christine, we front porch friends in this room and watching online, we have some decisions to make just like they did. Peggy and Christine had to choose whether to remain comfortable at their age, filled with good excuses to do nothing. Just to continue going to church and being all right with the fact that they were saved and going to heaven. They could have chosen to just do that, knowing their names were written in the Lamb's Book of Life and they were going to be going to heaven soon. They could have just stayed comfortable or they had a decision to make. You know what? My heart's still beating. And even though they were blind and crippled, they said, I can still do something. I can pray. And those two women prayed in a move of God that brought thousands and thousands and thousands of people to Jesus in a nationwide revival. Yes, we have some decisions to make just like they did. We, you, me, we. And why did I pull you into this? Because it's your time. Because your time has come, Esther. I've told y'all this at the, at the conference in April, and I've told people this in certain places that I feel led to tell them when I, when I go to travel. And the Lord has given me this word the last two or three years that wherever he sends me in specific places, I am to go. And y'all, I just feel this from the Lord. Like, like, like he's told me, he said, I'm going to send you in the spirit of Mordecai to go find Esther. It's like the heart of God pulling. It's like he said to me, go find Esther. 
Because your nation is in trouble too. And I feel a responsibility everywhere I go to say, Esther, are you here? I love what Mordecai says to Esther. Listen, in Esther 4, Mordecai says to Esther, he says, Esther, if you keep quiet at a time like this, deliverance from the Jew for the Jews will come from some other place, but you and your family will be lost. And then he says this, but who knows? Perhaps you were born for such a time as this. Come on, who knows, Esther? Perhaps, Esther, you were born for such a time as this. I believe every one of you in this room and every one of you watching me online right now were born for the hour of 2023. I believe that you were put on the front porch to be awakened as an intercessor and as an Esther for your family, yes, and for your generation. And should you choose to stay comfortable in your pews and your churches, it's true that deliverance for God's people will arise from someplace. But you and your children could be lost. <laughs> Esther was awakened when she heard the words of Mordecai. She was awakened to her purpose and Esther made up her mind. She made up her mind. The saving of my nation may cost me everything, even my life. But if I die, I die. But I am going to do something. Yes. Esther was willing to put her life on the line for her family and for the sake of her family and her nation. She knew that time was of the essence. And so what did she do? What did she do? The first thing Esther did when she heard the call of the Spirit of God through Mordecai, what was the first thing she did? First of all, she was awakened and said yes. The next thing that she did was she called a fast and she called the people to pray. And she sent word to Mordecai, Mordecai, you pray there. We'll pray here. Come on. Come on, Mordecai. You go tell the people of God. You pray there. We'll pray here. And what happened? They prayed and God responded. They prayed and heaven got involved. And the enemy to their nation was exposed and hanged on the gallows. And he was destroyed by the very plan he had made for Mordecai and for the people of Israel. So tonight... I do believe God brought you to this front porch friend's homecoming. And I do believe God brought you to watch online to ask you this question. Would you be willing to answer the call of Joel 2? Would you be willing to lay your life on the line, your time on the line, your job on the line? And like Peggy and Christine and Esther have taught us, something will happen if we will cry out. I'm telling you, when you get a perhaps moment... When you, like Christine and Peggy, or when you, like Esther, get a word from God that says, who knows? Perhaps. It means everything is hanging in the balance to your response. And I've noticed this about perhaps moments. It's always a little window, and it's not a big one. And you've got a quick opportunity to jump in. When you get the word that says you are in a perhaps moment, this thing could go either way for you. And I believe right now for our nation, this thing could go either way. And if the people of God stay dead and complacent, come on, and focused on the wrong thing, we can miss this thing. But I believe if the people of God will wake up and you pray there and we pray here, you pray there, we'll pray. Come on, front porch friends, y'all pray there, we'll pray here. I believe we have a God who wants to hear and answer and bring revival to our nation and the nations of the earth. Oh yes, Peggy and Christine taught us something that we've talked about often on the front porch. And that is this. They taught us that when you cry out, God hears. I love to talk about this to you. We just, just had it recently because it's the truth. Peggy, Christine, and Esther are like the women 
But guys, y'all too, but this is about women. But y'all, come on. We're all in this together. Let's go. The women of Jeremiah 31. This is what the Lord says. Oh, I love reading this to you. I love it. This is what the Lord says. That makes all the difference. A cry is heard in Ramah, a deep anguish and bitter weeping. Rahel weeping for her children, refusing to be comforted for her children are gone. But now this is what the Lord says. Do not weep any longer for I will reward you. Your children will come back to you from the distant land of the enemy. There is hope in your future, says the Lord. Your children will come again to their own border. Somebody take that right now and give God praise. That's right. Say it's mine. It's mine. Come on, if that's your word, jump up on your feet right now and say, that's mine. My children are coming back. My children are coming. My son, my daughter is coming back. My daughter, my son is coming back. You may be seated. Two very important keys. And I'm going to wrap with this. Stay with me, please. Two very important keys. Christy, Peggy, and... Esther taught us, and the women of Jeremiah 31. Number one is a cry is heard. If you want to know, this brings prodigals home. This brings prodigal husbands home, wives. This, this, will, this actually for any impossible situation. For any impossible situation. These two keys are huge. We talked about them recently. Let's talk about them again. Number one, a cry is heard. First of all, we know this. You lift your voice. Yes. 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 Jeremiah 33, 3. You call unto me, unto me and I will answer you. You lift your voice. It's one thing to let, uh, tell other people to pray. You need to lift your own voice. Yes. Now, I, you should tell other people to pray. But don't just go tell other people, pray for my son, pray for my husband. Pray. No, you get with God and you lift up your voice with everything you've got in you. You pray. A cry was heard. God is the one who said it. You call on me, I will answer. You ask, receive. You seek, you knock. God's saying, you do your part, I'll do my part. If you will, I will. If my people pray and repent, I will heal their land. You do the possible, I will do the impossible. Come on. I'm telling you tonight, I know you've prayed, but I came to tell you, pray again. Pray again. Pray again and again and again and again. Number two, I love this. First, a cry is heard. Here's the second huge part. You want to receive from God what looks impossible? It says these women here, they refuse to be comforted. Amen. Peggy and Christine refuse to be comforted. Amen. That's so awesome. I, I think that's the whole crux of the front porch is these two things. Sorry about that. You pray and you refuse to give up. That's what we talk about all the time because that's what I remember I needed to hear. You refuse to be comforted. When Peggy and Christine looked at their church, they said, this is not okay. Yes, amen. Yes, amen. Let's do what we did. I think in the summertime or the spring. Come here, Annalise, come here. My, I'll let my granddaughter represent Lindsay. This is Lindsay's daughter. Thanks. Since she couldn't be here, I'll let you represent her. You need to, you need to do what Peggy and Christine did. Take a really good look at your situation tonight. That's why you came to this homecoming. I know that. Because you have been. But it's, it's a good thing to just look at what it is you're believing for. And <clears throat> I mean, you need to look at your grandchild. You need to look at your son, your daughter. Maybe it's your husband or your wife. Look, look at the one that you love, that you are praying for. And you need to look at that thing. Just look at that. Just say, you know, is this okay? Are they doing okay spiritually? You need to ask yourself that. Is my daughter doing all right spiritually? Is my son, is he burning for God? Is my granddaughter really on fire for God? 
Is my grandson, does he call God the, the Lord of his life, Jesus the Lord of his life? Is God his first priority? Or am I spending a lot more time making sure they're popular? And a lot more time making sure that, that they're number one in sports and cheerleading and everything else. Is that the priority of my own heart for them? Or am I making sure that whatever the cost is, that the number one priority in their life, that they're burning for God? Come on, if they're going to play on the football team, at least they're going to burn for God. If they're going to be a cheerleader, whatever, then they're going to lead all the cheerleaders to Jesus and fill them with the Holy Ghost. Come on. i got to know that the first priority of my son, my daughter, number one thing, nothing else, Nothing else, but they love God. You need to ask yourself that. Because if they're not okay, and listen, believe me, our culture is trying to convince us, oh, they're okay. Don't worry. Oh, she wants to live that way. She wants to be that. She wants to live in that lifestyle. What all that matters is that she's happy. She can happy herself to hell. I'm telling you what. That's not the most important thing in the world, that they're happy. Come on. Jesus didn't just die to make us happy. He died to make us holy so that we can stand in the presence of God. Come on. If, if what they're doing and how they're living is against the word of God, it's not okay. And you can't be convinced ever, ever that it's okay. It's not okay. If they're not burning for God, it's not okay. And don't let family talk you out of it. Don't let culture talk you out of it. Don't let the people at work talk you out of it. Come on, you got to refuse to be comforted. You're going to let them know, you're not going to talk me out of my concern. You're not going to talk me out of it. Oh, come on. I feel the Holy Ghost. Stay right there, Annalise. No, no, my nice, I Peggy and Christine looked at their nation. They looked at their church. They looked at not one young person in their church. And they said, this is appalling. And they became greatly burdened. And they began to weep. Just like the women in Jeremiah 31. They were weeping for their children. Because that's what intercessors do. They began to weep. They began to weep over what is not okay. Weeping for her children. Refusing to be comforted. And let me tell you something. you got to make up your mind about that because comforters will abound. Yes, they will. Oh, yes, they will. Comforters will abound. You will have plenty of comforters on your journey of intercession. People that even mean well. People that even mean well. They mean well. Sometimes. I think sometimes they're convicted by what you're carrying, but, the, you know, they want to talk you out of it so they don't feel so whatever. But I don't know what the reason is. I, even, even Jesus had a... A comforter. That sort of meant well, I think. He one of his best friends, Peter. Jesus is talking about what he's about to have to do. His whole purpose for coming to the earth. To become the greatest intercessor that ever been. And he's telling the disciples, I'm going to have to be crucified. I'm going to have to suffer. And then I'll, I'm going to be buried. And, and, and Peter steps up and he's, oh, Lord, far be it from you. That's not going to happen to you. You don't have to do that. You go read it. Matthew 16. Peter says, you don't have. Oh, Lord, far be it from you. He's trying to comfort him that you don't have to do that. What did Jesus do? Get thee behind me, Satan. For you savor not the things that be of God, but the things that be of men. Oh, no. Can Jesus recognize the voice in the voice? And I'm telling you, comforters sometimes will make sure that you, that you know. I mean, they'll come up. You know, Peggy and Christine, I'm sure, had comforters. Come here. Come here, my sweetheart. Not, not because you look like Peggy and Christine, but just because I just, I'm looking for some mothers, all right? I know, because you ain't near that. Oh, but whatever. It's okay. But Peggy and Christine, they could have been talked to. They could have been comforted out of that. They could have been people telling them, now, Peggy, you know, honey, 84 and blind. And Christine, honey, 82 and crippled. And, and y'all know that y'all need to use wisdom. And at your age, you need to your sleep. And, and it's okay. These young people, I have somebody else praying for them. Peg and Christine, y'all need to take, you got to think about yourself first. You need to make sure y'all are okay first. Now, it's a little extreme. Six hours twice a week at your age and everything. So you don't, you don't be carrying that. It's okay. God understands. He'll call somebody else, I'm sure. Come on. Peggy and Christine said, no, 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 no. I refuse to be comforted. I, this ain't okay. The, the youth of my nation is not. They weren't even their family. They just said, it's the, there's no young people. We're appalled at the growing trend of worldliness. It's not okay. 
I'm sure Esther could have had some comforters. Now, Esther, I've heard what you're planning to do, sweetheart, about, you know, approaching the king. That's a little risky, honey. And, and listen, you're so comfortable in this palace, and, and it's good. It's a safe place for you, Esther. And, you know, and what you're dealing with, honey, it's a law that man has made. You can't change laws, Esther. So, Esther, you just need to just remain better in a safe place. Take care of yourself, honey. You take care of yourself. Come on. That's what you could have said. That's what they could have said to her. Esther said, no, no, no. I refuse to be comforted. I refuse to be comforted. Some of you mothers in this room tonight have had some comforters trying to tell you. Now, you know that, that you're going to have to take care of you. You've been praying for that prodigal for so long. And he's gonna, you can't control their life. You can't control them. They're an adult. They're going to have to do what they do. And you can't control them. You heard that? Yeah. They, they can tell you now, you just need to take care of yourself. Now, you, you can't let this destroy you too. You're going to have to make up your mind. I refuse to be comforted. Don't talk me out of this. I've already made up my mind. Like Esther that says, you know what? If it costs me my life, if I die, then I die. But I'm not moving. And all that matters to you is not what they said, but what does he say? And you got to go to God and say, I don't care what everybody else says. God, what do you say about my daughter God what do you say about my son now you got God in this when you cry out to God everything's about to change I need God right now who can be God for me sir with the mustache there's not a lot of men in here yes sir would you help me would you please help me? I know this man right here. I'll take whoever. Let's, let me take this one. You've got that precious angel. For your safety's sake, I'll wait. Because <laughs> you may get hurt. Him. But thank you for offering. Thank you. Let me, let me, would you help me? Come on. Give him a hand. I just need somebody to be God. I know it's big shoes, but you, we got it. You call on God and you get heaven involved. That's what happened to Peggy, Christine, and Esther. They begin to pray and all of a sudden heaven gets in action. And when you begin to pray, honey, and you don't give up, you've got God's attention. But when you get God on the scene and this is his will, you know what's going to happen. We've talked about it before. God loves them more than you do. God loves them more than you do. Just step right over there. But what happens is this. He wants to reach them. Just hold your hand out. Just see there? Just, just stand right there. Hold your hand out. See, there's this big gap. There's a gap. Just hold your arm straight out like that. There's, you see, this is, what, this is what sin does. Separates them from God. That's right. But you see, Jesus came as the ultimate intercessor to make a way for them to come to God. But the problem, here's the issue. Jesus, after he did his work that only he could have done, went back to heaven. And then he, you know what he said? He said, now I'm giving you the keys to the kingdom of heaven. Now whatever you bind on earth is bound in heaven. Whatever you loose on earth is loosed in heaven. He's already, he's not coming back with skin on. Now he's coming back, but not for this job. So what does he do? Ezekiel 22, 30. And God's looking for a man, somebody that will stand in the gap. Come on, who are you, front porch friend? You're the one that God finds in Ezekiel 22, 30. In that passage, the Bible says that God did not find anybody, and so the land was destroyed. But in 2023, it's not going to be written that God was looking for an intercessor to stand in the gap for a nation. And he's not, he's not going to be able to say, and I couldn't find anybody. I believe that this year, 2023, there's some front porch friends that are going to say, God, if you're looking for an intercessor, I'm going to take the hand of God and I'm going to take the hand of my prodigal and I'm going to stand in the gap. I'm going to stand in the gap. I'm telling you, this is who you are. This, hold my elbow. This is who you are. This is your role. Stand up all over this room. Band, come. Just stand right here. This is the essence of the front porch. No la manai. This is the essence. This is the whole purpose of it. This is the call of God. 
It's, it's you praying mother, praying husband, praying wife, praying grandmother, grandpa. It's you standing in the gap like Peggy and Christine did. Saying she's not okay, he's not okay. So God, if you're not okay with it, I'm not okay with it. I don't care if culture says they're okay. If God says they're not okay, then I'm not okay. The one standing in the gap is the one that believes that God's word is stronger than their bondage. The one standing in the gap is the one that hears the voice of God. Come on, pretend like you're talking to me. Just pretend like you're whispering to me. Just whisper something to me. All right. Yeah, I hear you, Lord. I hear you, Lord. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Then they turn and they go, thus says the Lord. Come on, hold my arm. The captive of the warrior will be released. The plunder of the tyrant will be retrieved. I will fight those that fight you. And I will save your children. Oh! That's who you are. Come on, pretend like you're talking to me. Yes, Lord. Yes, sir. Thus says the Lord. You will know the truth. And the truth will set you free. Ha <laughs> ha! This is your role. This is your role. This is why you matter. This is why the devil's been trying to kill you. This is why the devil's been trying to exhaust you. This is why the devil's been trying to discourage you. This is why the devil's been causing them to say things to you that hurt you so bad. He's trying to get you to stop praying for them. Because maybe if they say things that's so hurtful and so devastating that you would just be willing to let them go. Because you could. You could do what a lot of people are saying. Just let them go. Let them go. That's what people tell you. Let them go. Really? And you just be with God and let them go? Are you kidding? I made up my mind with my daughter. This is what I learned. Love lets go. Because if they're going to walk away and she moved to a different city, love, I mean, we can't control them to let them, you can't, they're going to go. Love lets go, but faith holds on. There's some things that in the natural, you may see them walk away and love has to let go. But faith will never let go. Come on. That's why they can block you from everything in their life on their Facebook, Instagram, and all their text messages. They can block you out. They'll never be able to block your prayers. They'll never be able to block your prayer closet. Refuse to be comforted. This is who you are. And I'm going to take this one last step further. I want you to bring me that flag. I believe this is about a child. I believe it's about a husband. I believe it's about a loved one. But I also believe it's about a nation. I want you to drape it around her neck. Because I believe tonight, God is looking for intercessors to stand and pray for a prodigal nation. Say, I'm not willing to turn my back on this nation and just give it away. And just be okay with just letting me and my family just go with God, but letting this nation know, I'm not willing to give it up. I'm not willing to give it up. I'm willing to say, God, you did it for pagan Christine. You brought a move of your spirit because they prayed. God, bring a move of your spirit one more time that will sweep this nation from sea to sea till it spreads to every nation of the earth. Come on, can we believe that the glory of God could cover this earth as the waters cover the sea? Can we see a prodigal nation turn back to God. Thank you. Thank you. Tonight, if you are believing for something that, thank you, sir. Thank you so much. But if you're believing tonight for something that looks impossible, I just want you to come. I know that it's crowded and and the only thing you may be able to do is take a step, but just do something to take a step. So just come tonight. We're going to just pray over people. Just stand right here. Just stand. And I know tonight it may be hard to get out in the aisle, but just do something. 
to make a step if you possibly can and fill this altar if you are believing for a prodigal if you're believing for something that is impossible we want to pray over you right now in jesus name come on anyone else just just fill up this gap right there honey thank you thank you so much thank you just help us i know you may be just standing in the aisle it doesn't matter that's fine he sees you he sees you if you're in the very back of the room it doesn't matter he sees you he sees you chosen i want y'all to just stand out here too just come and stand leadership i want y'all to come stand we're going to pray for some ladies tonight stretch your hands out toward them we're going to pray for some men these young men these dads these fathers that are here to pray there's a reason you came to the ramp because of the call of God on your life there's a reason you came here this weekend this is about something more than you've ever dreamed Esther God is awakening you tonight to your purpose he needs you I want to pray over you before we pray for your loved ones or before we pray for your need I want to just pray for you personally would you just lift your hands to the Lord father in Jesus name I pray over these, your sons and your daughters in this room tonight. I pray that tonight, Father, that you would strengthen the weary for their bodies to be renewed. Oh, come on right now. I pray right now this exhaustion to be replaced with joy. Exhaustion has to just flee away sorrow and mourning is going to flee away come on the weariness has to go right now in the name of Jesus the anxiety in your mind has to go in the name of Jesus and I declare peace is coming I declare joy in you again to fight with to stand with to pray with to live father I declare joy joy as her strength and as his strength in Jesus name peace for you right now in the name of Jesus peace for you right now thank you Lord Samuel I want you to get ready to pray I want any of you uh, leadership I want y'all to help me come out here any of you leadership get ready to help me pray how many of you wave at me are praying for a prodigal wave at me if you're praying for a prodigal I see you okay okay right now thank you Lord I'm gonna begin to pray for them right now so here's what I want us to do with your right hand I want you to reach up and take the hand of God okay now take the hand of God now with your left hand I want you to reach over and take the hand of your prodigal whoa there you go that's who you are look at you that this is who you are you're the one standing in the gap that's who you are now right there intercessor you stand with strength you stand with courage. You stand with renewed hope. Things are about to change. Oh! Come on, there it is, there it is. Things are about to change. Whoa, shifting. Woo! Come on, lift up your voices. Hey! Oh, God, go get them tonight. Oh, awaken my daughter, awaken my son, awaken my husband, awaken my wife. Go get them tonight, God. Shake them, Lord. Oh, in Jesus' name. Come on, don't stop. Pray. Call their name out loud. Call their name. Call their name. Come on, ladies. Come on, parents. Come on, call their name before the Lord. Jesus, go get them. We refuse to be comforted. Awaken their hearts. Awaken them by shaking them. Awaken them, Holy Spirit. Lord, wherever they are right now, God, whisper to their ears, come home. Come home. There's a Father in heaven who loves you. Jeremiah 31, I have loved you with an everlasting love. With loving kindness, I am drawing you to myself. Be drawn to the Lord. God, get them out of darkness and place them into your marvelous light.
Call them chosen. Call them special. In Jesus' mighty name, Holy Spirit, we release the angels of the Lord to go get them. Bring them home. Out of bondage. Out of addiction. Out of confusion. Out of fear. Out of drug addiction. Out of perversion. Into freedom. Lord, we declare the victory of the Lord. We declare the victory of the blood of Jesus. We declare the victory of the word of the living God. Jesus saves. Jesus saves. And he is saving our children. pray tonight I want us to agree for this that every wrong relationship and influence they are involved with is broken come on let's agree for that every wrong voice may the mouth of those that speak lies be silenced change them or move them change them or move them change oh come on change them or move them change them or move them Come on, we're part of a can on my. I feel the Holy Ghost on that. God, every friend, every influence in their life. I pray, God, you would change them or move them. Change them or move them. In the name of Jesus. Lord Jesus, I pray right now, Father, that you would send them godly influences. Let's agree for that. Send them godly influences. Send them voices of truth. 
Unless they're great for this, Lord, let the scales fall from their eyes. I declare your loved one will see truth. Where the God of this world has blinded their mind, I declare the breaking of that thing. In Jesus' name, the breaking of the spirit of deception. Deception is broken. Rebellion is broken. The stubborn heart is melted. In the name of Jesus. Pam Barnett, if you got anything to pray, come and pray it. Do you have anything to pray? Lord, we thank you that you are a God of hope. Lord, you can do anything, Lord. Yes. Nothing is hard for you, God. So, Lord, we break the lie off of any mindset right now. God, Lord, that this is too hard. This is too far gone. Lord, this is not too far gone. Lord, we declare that hope is being renewed tonight, God. Lord, faith is rising in this room, God. Eyes are turning to you, God. Believing, God, you are all powerful, God. Lord, we thank you that you are moving. You are moving. You are breaking things right now. God. Lord, I declare faith is rising in this room. Come on, let that faith rise up in you. You serve a great and powerful God. He can do anything. He can do anything. And no one can stop him. Lord, we lift our eyes to you, God. Lord, we say once again, we believe. We believe. Lord, we look with our expectant eyes of faith. God, we see it right now with eyes of faith, God. Lord, you are doing it. You are doing it. You are doing it, God. It's turning around. Miracles, 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 miracles tonight. Miracles are happening tonight, right now, right now. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. He's moving. He's moving. Hallelujah. Oh, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, God. Come on, lift your heart and declare it. God, I believe. I'll see a miracle. God, I believe.
we declare that angels are being released because they move at the power the command of his word we declare tonight that our loved ones will know the truth and the truth will set them free that their hard stony stubborn heart is going to be turned to a heart of flesh God I thank you Lord Tonight, the axe is laid to the root of the tree. Even from the roots, Lord, you're uprooting things. You're tearing down things. You're building and restoring in Jesus' name. Oh, thank you, Father. Before we even do anything else tonight, before we even dismiss, I want us to just pray one thing. I want us to pray over this nation. Just, just bring me that flag one more time. I, I just feel such a burden. I believe tonight the word the Lord gave me concerning Joel 2 was concerning a nation that perhaps, who knows, perhaps, if his people will pray, humble themselves. He didn't even say if the world repents. It says if God's people will repent. And turn from our wicked ways. He will hear from heaven. He will heal our land. Let's, would you just stretch your hands even toward this flag? and Let's just pray over it right now. Let's pray over our nation. Father, in the name of Jesus, over a prodigal nation, I pray that tonight... That there would be, oh, let's, let's pray this. Isaiah 44, 3, you promised you would pour water on him that is thirsty and floods on the dry ground. Our nation is thirsty. Our nation is dry ground. God, pour water and pour floods of your spirit. Let an awareness of God grip this nation. Let an awareness of God grip this nation, causing men and women to repent. Even those in high places, Lord, as intercessors and people of the kingdom of God, we pray, God, that even Washington, D.C. is gripped with the visitation of God, causing men and women to call upon the Lord. An awareness of God bringing this nation to repentance in Jesus' name. Come on, one more time. Move the immovable. Let's just pray, God, we believe for an awakening in America again. God we believe God we believe God we believe from the impossible we'll see a miracle the more I studied that revival in the Hebrides and realized it was an awareness of God that just gripped the whole city they weren't even they weren't even in their buildings they were just visited in their homes we're in the hour that that's what we're gonna have to have this hour is so critical I believe our window is so short we don't have time to sit around and wait anymore or wait for a big evangelist or somebody to come through no no, those, those times are over. We've got to have an awareness of God. Would y'all step so I can see my sweet friends over here? We've got to have an awareness of God to grip this nation. I mean, encounter people rotting them. In, what about your family just getting encountered tonight at a bar, on their recliner in front of the television, watching a video game? Come on, on their phone, God encounters them. Why don't we agree, Lord, let it start with our family and just sweep the whole nation. Now ladies and gentlemen, we've got to believe that this is not too hard. We can't look at it and say, well, it's too hard, it's impossible. No, not with our God. 
not with our God. He just said ask, and we're going to ask, and we refuse to quit. Amen? Amen. Well, this is where tonight we will let you go and rest. I know probably you're tired from the travel, and, but I'm so thankful you're here. So glad you're here. And uh, <laughs> we're going to have a wonderful weekend together. If you do want special prayer, my team is here. They are wanting to pray with you. And even tonight, if you need special prayer, they will be here to minister on one-on-one. -on -one. And then tomorrow, all day long, we're just going to be together. It's going to be incredible. I see my sweet friend. And um, so just get ready. You get you some good rest. And go to the Millhouse Coffee Shop in the morning now. Yeah, go early because the line can get long if you wait till late. You need to go get you a honeybee latte. You just tell them that's, that's what I love. Honey bee latte. That's the good, that's the good stuff. And, uh, or whatever you want. They have different things. But it will, it, the, all the proceeds of the mill house comes to the ramp. It's our, it's our coffee shop. So you can just go and be blessed. But go, go get you some good rest tonight. Now, the coffee shop's not open tonight. But it'll be open in the morning at 7 o'clock. Okay? All right. Good night, ladies. I love you. Gentlemen, I love you all, all so much. Good night, my sweet friends. I'll see you in the morning.